Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. I recently spoke about a very sensitive topic that a lot of people have been telling me about that they want me to talk about in my videos and that is about not being able to afford products for art and for crafting. So I thought I would make a few videos just to show you that creating art does not have to be expensive. You can do it in a very frugal way and save money doing it. And it's really important that you just want to create no matter how much things cost. Meaning that if you, even if you're buying cheap products, it's still okay to do that as long as you're creating and you're expressing your feelings or emotions. And one of the things I wanted to create is basically a junk journal. What a junk journal is using a lot of recycled materials to create a journal that you can use for art journaling. As you know, I'm really into art journaling right now, so I really wanted to show you how to create one. Now, I've never created one before, and I wanted to kind of do it my own way. And the reason why I say that is because I actually went to look on YouTube to see what kind of art journals are there that I could do with junk journaling. And I realized that a lot of people do things that I really don't want to do, which is sewing the art journal or using elastic bands. So I thought I would do it my own way. I'm sure this is not something I discovered at all, but it's just a way that I want to use. I want to create this art journal that will be beneficial for me and that it's the way that I create. This is, will help me in the way that I create. Another idea that I want to share with you, and that is really important, is to, you can use an old book. So what I did is, this is an old book that I took the spine off and all the pages, and then I glued one of these metal of the rings from Tim Holtz and cut my own paper to create an art journal. Now, if you don't have these rings, all you have to do is just basically glue pages like the junk journal inside of this or create your own cover with this. You can also use a book like this and keep the pages inside and use the book, the pages of the book as an art journaling page. So for example, I'm going to use some of these papers. This is from a soft cover book that you see over here, I'll show you. So this is from a soft cover book that I use in my classes, but you could definitely use a thick book. I've seen people use that before, but I wanted to create a junk journal, not a book journal. And the thing with the pages from a book is that I find that they're very thin. So usually what you have to do, if you are planning on using them in your in a book, that you have to kind of glue a few of them together to make the page thick enough. So for this one, I'm actually going to use kind of two pages together. But the way that I wanted to create this junk journal is to basically glue the middles. Now I have a lot of different things here. I have plastic packaging because I really want to include some alcohol ink designs in my art journal. And I think packaging, plastic packaging is the best way to do that. I also have some, as I said, book pages. I have some paper bags, some more plastic packaging. I have different kinds of paper bags. I even have this one that, that I really like. So I got it from somewhere. So I want to include it as well. I have this beautiful paper bag that I thought this would be really cool to incorporate. I have a manual from a printer. I kind of ripped out the French side of it because I, I only kept the English side. So that way I don't need, because I don't really need it. So you can recycle, you can use uh, receipts, you can use envelopes. So here's another envelope. This was a very large bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to create it like this. So this is actually two of them that I'm going to create. I hope that this works out the way I'm thinking. I really want to just have something very junky. I don't care if the pages get mixed up and if they get colored in between. I just really want to have something that I can quickly create something with that is more organic and basically more fun to create with because it looks kind of messy and junky. Now, for people that are, were creating things online, I noticed that what they did is that they actually cut things to the same size. So for example, they went and they cut pages to the same size. I do not want to do that. I like the fact that all these pages are different and different sizes because that adds to the really uniqueness of the journal. I want to do that. I like the fact that all these pages are different and different sizes because that adds to the really uniqueness of the journal.
If you want to really use a professional art material, then you can use this 3D matte gel to do those, to do th to do this. However, just because I'm really trying to be frugal with what I'm using, I want to use some regular white glue, like school's glue. So that way I can create it in a very inexpensive way. Okay, so here is basically the white glue. It cost me $1.25. And I just want to show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to play around with this because obviously I don't, I've never want, done one before. But I'm thinking that if I keep it kind of in the middle, it should work. But what I'm trying to do is that I want to kind of create things that people will be able to do at home without having to basically worry about spending a lot of money. So basically things so that what I have here is a bone folder that I'm going to just use to kind of press it. You don't have to do this, but it kind of kind of gets that the glue out and okay, so I'm going to use that. And I mean, every once in a while I'm going to check to make sure. So for example, here I just I just realized that what's going to happen is that I have to add less of it here. I want to just have the the middle glued and when I press with the bone folder it kind of went everywhere like this and I just realized that I might have added too much glue in the middle okay so that I know so this is how you experiment and you learn from this so what I'm going to do is this time I'm going to add the glue let's see if what happens if I add the glue to the actual spine just a little bit so I think I have to really be careful of how much I add I'm going to kind of play around with it so that way I'm it's I'm not adding too too much to it okay there we go I think this is going to be a little bit better so by adding it to the spine I'm able to control how much I'm adding now I saw it done where people are sewing things but truthfully I don't really want to sew I don't have patience to sew who has patience to sew it's more like just having fun and creating, right? And you could cut these buds. You don't have to have this area here, but I think it's cool. I actually want to incorporate those areas here because they kind of give it a really cool effect. I can glue the whole thing, including this part. Just kind of using my finger to fix the area so it doesn't go everywhere. That's good because this paper is much bigger. And what I can do is just kind of hold it together with something like I'll put like a clip at the end so that will work as well so right now I've barely spent any money on creating this journal but as I said you can use an old book if you don't want something looking so junky this is a really nice gift bag and I want to kind of incorporate it here okay so the reason why I'm not opening the gift the the bags and I'm leaving them double like on a double like paper is because I want them thick enough that when I add the mediums the mediums will not ruin the paper so this is uh, the manual that I was talking about it's a very thin manual so I wonder if these papers should kind of be glued to each other as well so you could use like three papers at a time they wait the same way I would use in a book the reason why I chose the bigger envelopes from the outside is because I wanted to contain everything in these envelopes so it's easier that way and the last page which is this was a really big brown envelope so I cut it in half and that's basically the last two four pages of the book which is the last two pages in the front and in the back now there's other ways of doing this book where you could just have each page folded individually with each other but I like that one side will be like one way and another the other. So I'll show you what I mean. So for example, here, I'll have this side be like this and this side be the other. So it works well that way. Okay. So this glue might show a little bit and that's okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get some clips and hold the whole thing together. Some of the glue might spread everywhere but I just have to let this dry until it's dried up and once it's dried I'm going to open it up and use the pages as an actual journal 
Okay, so just to show you the progress so far, not everything has dried. Some things are still, I'm still waiting for them to dry. But as you can see, like obviously the glue is maybe not the greatest solution, but I actually like the way it's turning out. I'm just kind of pulling here a little bit. So I will have these two pages as one. And even here it kind of transferred to the paper. Oh, that's cool. I don't like, I don't mind that. What's taking longer to dry, I find, is the plastic and it's kind of moving but that's okay as well this one is was a bit too thin so i might have to no, i'm not sure if i'll use it or we'll just stay the cool thing about the plastic too is that it's kind of like a transparency behind something else so that's neat as well i see here that there's a bit of glue so what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of wipe a little bit of this glue so that way when i turn the page it stays here is another place where it kind of stuck together and that's okay the other thing you can do and I'll show you something that you can do is just take a little bit of masking tape and I think this will help I'm gonna just kind of use some masking tape which will not only give it some great texture but will also help with kind of helping uh, making sure that things don't stick to each other so I'm going to so it will help me keep this stuff in place and also make sure that things don't stick to each other so that's cool as well you can use masking tape you can use washi tape as well if you want to I'm going to use some here as well so I think I'm going to add kind of a and a layer of of masking tape in some areas so here maybe for example I have to cut this so this cannot be that way just because it's not gonna going to work. It has to be the same size of the paper. As I, as I go along with things, I'm kind of learning kind of things work and kind of what kind of things don't work. I think masking tape will be great. You'll see what I mean later. It might look ugly right now, but it will look really cool once once you start once I start creating the pages. So let me just kind of go here and we go. And I'm going to add some here as well. So I'm basically going to tape every single edge. I do the masking tape anyways for my regular art journals. So why not do this for a junk journal? Like what I actually like about this is that it's exactly how I imagined it. Oops, this is sticking to each other. I imagined the junk journal to be exactly like this, like very messy looking maybe not ripping the way I'm doing right now so this was a mistake and I have to be careful next time so I think what would work next time is that as soon as I put the glue I should put this the masking tape on top so that helps mo not moving things around so this is cool it still looks cool but it's not what I intended to do um, I need to glue this so the masking tape is kind of holding things in place as you can see because some things are either sliding or not working properly. Okay, so let's see if this works. So this one goes through this one. This one goes with this one. I think the masking tape would have helped if I would have put it from the beginning. But I'm going to do that and then I'm going to put those clips again. So the masking tape is going to be going everywhere. And as I said, if you want to, I'm trying to use stuff that is cheap. But if you want to make it more decorative, then go ahead and use uh, washi tape, which looks will look really colorful and nice. It's just that I'm trying to make this as cheap as possible. And masking tape is basically from any hardware store. You can it's readily available. Yeah, this is much better. So I should have done the masking tape from the beginning. That was my mistake. But as I said, I learned from my mistakes and I basically turn them around so if you don't want to do things like sewing and you want to have things beautifully arranged and have like some kind of junk journal then you can just use masking tapes I will just continue masking everything and I'll show you the final result so I am really excited on how this turned out I didn't know what I was doing but I feel like I actually accomplished what I wanted to do which was to create something a junk journal that did not require any sewing or any type of elastic and just use glue the number one tip that I recommend that if you're using glue is that as soon as you use glue to put a little piece of 
um, masking tape on top which I should have done from the beginning. This is a bag actually that I got from a store that I go teach at. It's called Paper Lane Studio. So this was actually their packaging bag. So I used it for the beginning of the journal. Then as you see here, is, there is the envelope and the manual, their beautiful gift bag, some really nice packaging like see-through packaging. And what I like about this masking tape and beside making sure that the pages don't stick to each other it actually created a very thick binding so the binding is thick enough that it's not it's holding the book together which is really nice and i just love that it's so unique and different from anything that i have so as you can see the pages are just kind of coming together there's the smaller ones here and these are other gift bags and things like that that i use some of them have become really wet and I want to be careful with those so I'll probably have to use gesso to kind of protect them. And there's the book pages as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave this um, open so that way the glue dries properly. I forgot to, I want to maybe put some in the middle here to just strengthen the binding in the middle. Since you're putting gesso, it's not a problem to add any type of masking tape or washi tape. It really helps. And let me see. Um, okay, so this I have to cut. So when it, it folds, it's not good. But other than this, it's just good to kind of keep it in the middle that way. Maybe I'll fold it on the side and this can just be just to not waste it i'm just putting it in so as i said if you'd want to have it some more colorful you could use washi tape but this is basically going to be my junk journal that i want to work with and show you all the different techniques and all the different things that you can do while using very inexpensive products so just stay tuned for the next few videos as I am going to be creating my own mixed media products like gesso and texture paste so we can use in this junk journal. So thank you so much everyone for joining me today. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on social media. If you have other ideas on how to create a junk journal that does not require sewing or elastic bands or is simple for people to create quickly just for fun, then go ahead and share them in the comments. If you've created your own junk journal before, I'd love to see it. And I really appreciate you coming and joining me today. Uh, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel and also join my Facebook group, Karen Tamir and Friends Creative Space. So that way you can actually share any projects inspired by this junk journal or by any of my videos or products that I have. Thank you so much, everyone. Have an amazing day. Bye.